CataractCoach.com. Let's talk about some lens calculations. This case is steep corneas and anisometropia. Welcome to a new feature we have here on CataractCoach.com. We're going to feature an interesting lens calculation, surgical planning, because think about it. Surgical planning, the lens calculation, how you're going to do the surgery is as important as actually doing the surgery. So your patient's visual outcomes are very much dependent on your calculations and your math, and most importantly, your surgical judgment. So we're going to try feature semi-monthly here, a lens calculation case study, something interesting from my own clinic or submitted from you of how to do the appropriate lens calculations to give your patients the best visual results. Our first case here is very interesting. Steep corneas, case of almost 50 diopters, and anisometropia, different axial lengths, and doesn't make sense. Let's watch the video. All right, let's talk about some lens calculations. So when we look here at this patient, right eye, left eye, bottom, the big glaring thing is the difference in axial length of more than one millimeter. And even the machine gives you a warning here and says, listen, there's a difference between the two eyes. Everything else looks pretty good though. Everything else is very symmetric between the two eyes, very clean. So it makes you wonder, is this correct? Now the K's are a little different, but not terribly so. It's really that glaring axial length difference there between the right eye being shorter and the left eye being longer. So we go to do our lens calculations. You can see what the printout says here. The printout gives very different answers for both eyes. So if you just look here in this top corner, look at Barrett, 12 and a half on this eye for Plano, but seven or seven and a half on this eye. So let's say seven and a half here and 12 and a half there, a difference of five diopters between the two eyes. That seems like a lot. Now also I want you to look at the lens calcs and look, and let's look at this side, 12 and a half, 12, 12 and a half. Why is it so much higher on this RKT? Or look at this eye. Barrett's is seven and a half. Hagus maybe seven, seven and a half. Hill, seven and a half. Holiday, seven and a half. Why is SRKT saying nine? And Hoffer's a bit off too. Now we know Hoffer's off because Hoffer doesn't do really well in long eyes. And this is a longer eye, but look what else we're talking about, the Ks. Look how steep the Ks are. Ks of 49 and a half on the steep meridian. Average K of almost 48 and a half. Remember this, SRKT, see the K in there? It stands for Kraff, man is Kraff, K-R-A-F-F is the guy's name. SRK is Sanders, Retzlaff, and Kraff, three Chicago-based ophthalmologists in the U.S. who devised this formula. But the one thing you have to remember with the SRKT formula is it really relies very heavily on the K value to determine the effective lens position, or ELP. And so the problem is when the Ks are very unusual, very, very flat, or very, very steep like here, that's going to be off. So don't use SRKT. So on these, you're probably better off going with one of these formulas. Let's say I do a 7.5 in this side, and in this side, you do a 12.5. Now, does that make sense though? There's one important thing we have to look up and that is looking up the patient's old glasses. And why is, the, why is that important? It gives you some sort of history. Now, the, on the refraction today, the auto refraction, there's a difference in the two eyes, a difference of maybe about five diopters or so at the spectacle plane, not the eyewall plane. And that matches the kind of glasses that were from six months ago but if you look at the really old glass from eight years ago, that's probably before there was a lot of nuclear sclerosis from the cataract, right? So less myopic shifts. You can see older RX here shows more on the left than the right, but that really got accentuated and, and more um, difference between the two as the NS developed the size. So this is probably more accurate representation. So the eight-year-old glass is likely having minimal or no cataract, six and a half, diopters with some um, astigmatism. So let's say an average here, a cerebral equivalent of minus seven. And on this eye, maybe a cerebral equivalent of more like minus 10 and a half. So that's about a three and a half difference in, in diopters at the spectacle plane. And that's good historically. So now going back to this, the patient did have a lot of astigmatism. So you see the astigmatism here, astigmatism here. And if we look at the tomography as well, you can see 
very significant with the rule of stigmatism, right eye, as well as left eye. So the patient's going to get toric lenses. Patient wants to go to Plano OU. And so what did we end up implanting for this patient? Let me show you. We implanted these two lenses. So right eye we put in a 12 and a half, left eye a 7 and a half, just per the calcs. And you know what we ended up with? We actually achieved Plano OU. So this is a good example of a couple take-home points. Number one, there can be anisotropy between the two eyes, especially in myopic eyes. The other example is very hyperopic eyes, or one eye is a little bit more amblyopic. And then also, look at the old glasses. The old glasses had a significant anisometropia, which is borne out here in the spectacle plane as well. So the glasses had three and a half drops of anisometropia, and that's at the spectacle plane. Those are the eight-year-old glasses. So multiply that by about one and a half, and that should be about a five doctor anisometropia intraocular on the IOL plane, and that's exactly what we have. And then also remember, don't use SRKT if the Ks are funny. So when the Ks are unusual, very steep or very flat, avoid the SRKT. Thanks for watching.